In this episode, I'm going to cover the Cloud Firestore streaming to a list, and I'll be adding data to the Cloud Firestore and retrieving the data in a streamable list. So to get started, I'm going to go to my IDE, and it's Android Studio in this case, and in a previous video, I covered configuring Firebase. That is number one, and you got to do it for both Android and iOS, and check that video out. I will have a link to that in the description and at the end of this video as a card. Okay, so I've persisted some data here, so I don't no longer want to use this in this location. What I want to do is configure a list. So how, many, how will I do that? Well, there's a really easy way to get going, and that is in the Firestore README. So I'm going to go to the Firestore README, and I've already dialed it up on the browser, and that is github.com forward slash Flutter plugins. And I'll leave a link to this in the description below the video. And I'm going to scroll down, and what I'm looking for is the book list. Well, I'm going to copy this book list and use it for my mountain list. And I'll make a couple modifications. And I'm using mountains for my list or, or mountains for my data or documents. So I will go down and add this widget. Whoops. I need to make it a class. I'm going to go down and add this as a class. So this is a book book list class. So I'm going to refactor and go refactor rename. So this I'll rename to mountains list or mountain list because a list seems plural. Okay, so then I need to change this to, let's say, what did I change it to or what did I call it in the Fire, Firebase demo? So let me go and look and it, the, the collection is called mountains. Okay, so I'm going to use that as my collection, mountains. And, okay, if it doesn't have data, it's going to be loading. And this is going to be the title. Is that what I named the key? So let's look at mountains. And let's reload this. For some reason, that document is not showing up. And I'm going to select mountains. And here's the document and the title and type. Okay, so title and I'm going to put the type here. Okay, so I can use this as the list. Well, I'm gonna, I want to just say, okay, I want to make my, let's look at the phone here. I want to make this here my body of the list. So that's the scaffold body. So I'm going to go instantiate new mountain list. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Command save, and that should hot reload it. Okay, I'm going to run it from the beginning here just to make sure it is running. Okay, oh, oh. Why did that error show up? Well, if you're using beta, the new beta or the master, in this case, I'm on master, and this is an error from a previous build, and what I have to do is fix this. Well, how do I fix that? Well, I know what I'm looking for because in Dart 2, you have to be a little bit more explicit about your types. If a dynamic type is being returned, you have to specify what that is. Well, in this case, it's a little opaque out of how to find that yet. Maybe in the future it'll get easier. So I know it's somewhere in here because I don't have any type declaration. So I know it's returning a snapshot and a context, but what type is it? So let's look at the builder. I'm going to command click on the builder and see what the property type is. Well, it's an async widget builder. So I'm going to command click on that. Okay. So it's a widget or it's a type def with a widget return. And this async is defining a function, which is, and uh, has some generics in here. So generic a T and it's returning. So what I want to do is copy this function or parameters here. And I want the build context and async snapshot and I'm going to go back to main and paste it in and this will give me my whoops I didn't I need to insert it inside the parentheses and so the next thing I want to do is provide that type well, let's see if it fixes it without the type so I'll hit run from the beginning up there reload it hot reload should work too Okay, so I need one more. I know that this generic will fix it because I've already run through this routine once. And okay, so the async snapshot, what is that async type of snapshot? Okay, so what I want to do is look at the snapshots. That's the type I'm going to look for. And that is the query snapshot. So that's a generic I'm providing to the stream. And in this case, I'm looking at um, the build, the stream builder. So that's a generic. So what I want to do is I could probably put it. Okay. Uh, right here. I'm going to put query snapshot. I want to get the phone loaded again here and go save and see what happens. So I'm going to run it from the beginning 
and debug it here. Okay, so that fixed it. So basically simply explicitly stating the type that I expect to return fixed the, the type error in here. And that's part of the Dart 2 system changes. I'm not going to go into that in great detail today. You can follow the Dart series that I'm putting out, and I'll talk about casting and generics and explicitly setting the generic types in and your type intentions in building your application at a later time. Okay, so that basically adds, well, what if I created a button down here so I can add more data to see if it re updates in real time? Well, let's do that. I'm going to create a floating action button. So floating action button equals new floating action button. And I'm going to put an anonymous function here to complete that. And I want to do a child. And this text will be, or I'll add some text to the child here, new text. And what should I say in this text? Oh, no, I want to use, use an icon here, new icon, icon. And I'll pick from icons library. And let's say add, okay, and let's do auto formatting. And we'll do a trailing comma and then auto formatting. And auto formatting is on my system, command option L, or maybe con control option L on your system. Okay, so what I wanna do here is actually persist some data. So I'll just grab this data up here and bring it down and persist it. Let's just minimize this here. And what I want to do here is add a, some trailing commas for reformatting. And you can see what happens here and auto formatting. And you can see I'm persisting a map of data. Okay, so what I want to do next is test it. Well, let's change the data to, let's say, mount, um, let's say, let me say, mount Vesuvius. Okay. I think that's Mount Vesuvius, and it's a volcano, and I'll hit save. So that means when I press on the floating action button, it should update. So let me run that. Hot reload isn't there, so I'll hit run from the beginning, and there we go. And the floating action button shows up. Okay, so when I click on this, it should add or persist some data, and the stream as an observer, it should go, oh, hey, there's new data. Let me add that to your list. Well, let me try that. I'm going to click on it. Okay, there it was, Mount Vesuvius showed up. That was pretty cool. So it's like real-time data. You persist it, it comes back and loads into the list. So let me press it a few more times. That's really cool. So that is neat how the Stream Builder works with persisting and loading the data. So that concludes this video on persisting and loading that data into a streamable list from Firestore. I'll put a link to the code below in the description of this video. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter, and I'll catch you later.